Welcome to the message of the Bible GPS. Today we're going to focus on a very important topic and that is to let go. This is one of the hardest things in life to do is to let go but it's a very very important thing to do to experience life in abundance. So that will be our focus. But before we're going to do that, I just want to say thank you for your ongoing support. You support us by subscribing to our YouTube videos. Thank you for that. You also support us by liking our videos, by sending us comments and sharing the videos to your family and friends. In that way, you support us tremendously. And thank you so much for the ongoing donations. We are growing and we are so thankful for that. And that will help us to expand our ministry. So before we go into focus on the topic to let go, let us just bow our heads in prayer. Dear God, we want to thank you for the beauty of the day. Thank you, Lord, that we can go to the Bible because we know the Bible is more than a book of information. It is a book of transformation. The message of the Bible is clear, current and compelling. Help us, Lord, to understand this today in a new way, how the Bible can still speak into our lives in the 21st century where we are at this moment. I pray, Lord, that you will give us open hearts, open minds to listen to your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now, as I've said, one of the hardest things in life to do is to let go. And I've experienced it a few months ago where I needed to make a very, very difficult decision. My daughter came to visit during Christmas and she saw that where we live in the condo unit that our dog is lonely. We have a black lab and I and that black lab are like this. It is one is probably my best friend, that black Labrador. And she said, Dad, the dog is lonely because I'm out of the house a lot and there's no one to spend time with her. I walk in the morning, walk in the evening, but that is not enough. And I could see the loneliness in the dog and how it actually wears me down because I don't always have the energy to take care of the dog. And I actually didn't want to listen to my daughter because I felt guilty to give this beautiful dog that means so much to me away. I just felt guilty. But reality kicked in and we found a great family. And one day we made that trip to that family. It was one of the hardest things I ever had to do in my life is to let go of a Labrador, a black lab, one of my best friends for five years. And I also needed to let go of the guilt because my daughter had helped me to understand we need to make a decision what is best for the dog. But it was so hard to let go. In the Bible, we have many examples of people who needed to let go. It was not easy for them as well. And in today's passage, I'm going to focus on one person who needed to let go, and that is Abram. Now, we know that Abram and his wife couldn't have children. Before they lived in a place where God had asked them they need to go, so they needed to leave everything that was familiar to them because God said, I want you to go. I want you to go to a land. And he even didn't know where, he, where that land was. He just honored God and obeyed God, and he left. And one day there was a time where he needed to decide about land and he needed to let his nephew Lot go as well to pick that land. And then at the old age, he and his wife got a child and God said through that child, there will be a new nation. There will be a new hope, a new promise for this world. God made a covenant to Abraham and Isaac was born. And then in Genesis 22, God is something extraordinary. And I want to read there for us in chapter 22, verses 1, 2, and 3. Sometime later, God tested Abram. He said to him, Abram, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the re region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering. So God acknowledged that I know you love your son so much, but I want you to go to the mountain Moriah and sacrifice your son. And Abram obeyed. We read in chapter 22 of Genesis, he obeyed. 
And on his way to the mountain, he took Isaac. And Isaac said, but dad, where is the, the sacrifice? Where is the animal? And then Abram responded to his son. He said, God will provide. And as soon as he wanted to kill his son as the sacrifice, the angel stopped Abram. And Abram saw an animal. And God did indeed provide. It was a test for Abram. But he did not know that. He did not know that God would provide a sacrificial animal. And then in chapter 22, verse 14, it says, Then Abram called that place, the Lord will provide. And this is indeed what happened. The Lord will provide. And the Lord did provide. But Abram needed to give up, to let go of his son, of the son he loved, and also of the promise that God gave him. On his way to the mountain, Abram probably thought, you know what, how can God expect me to do this? He probably thought, but God does not make sense. And many times we feel like that when we need to let go. It just doesn't make sense. Now the question is, why is it not always that easy to let go? You know, we hear songs about Shake It Off by Taylor Swift, just shake it off. But it is not that easy to shake things off. Maybe you need to shake off something that's weighing heavy on you, a pain, an unforgiving spirit, or maybe you are in a relationship that is not healthy. You need to shake it off. You need to let go, but you just don't do that. You are in a work situation that you know is not healthy for you. It wears you down. You wake up, you feel trapped. You don't want to go there, but you need to let go. You need to find other job. So there are so many ways where people feel trapped, where they feel stuck, where they realize, I need to let go to get out of here. But why is it so difficult for so many people to let go of something that weighs heavy? And I think the number one reason is fear. Now, when you read the Bible, fear is the most repeated command in the Bible. More than 360 times the Bible says, fear not. I would have thought but that you need to love is the most repeated command. No, it isn't. It is fear not. Because fear prevents us of letting go. Because fear wants to keep us where we are. And this is the problem that God has when we keep on fearing. Because when you keep on fearing and don't let go, you remain where you are. You are trapped. You're not happy. You wrestle and you cannot enjoy life in abundance. So you remain where you are when you are constantly in fear. Because God wants you to face your fear. Because fear can stand for either one of two things. It can stand for forget everything and run. Or it can stand for face everything and rise. And this is what God wants us to do. Face everything and rise. Because God doesn't want you to go through life. God wants you to grow through life. If you live in fear, you remain where you are. Then you just go through life, frustrated, unfulfilled. But when you let go and let God, you grow through life. And then you experience life in abundance. You experience new things. Life is exciting. So this is why we need to face our fear and rise. Therefore, sometimes we just need to say goodbye to relationships or to a work or to a guilt or something. You need to say goodbye. You need to shake it off. You need to let go. And many times there is good in saying goodbye. But the reality is, the unfortunate reality is that there are so many people, they are ready to grow. They are ready, ready to move forward but they're not willing to let go. And that causes a lot of frustration. I know many people and I talk to many people, they're ready to grow, but they are not ready to let go. And that causes a lot of frustration. Now the question is, how can we let go? I just want to focus on three things. How can we let go? How can we get rid of this frustration? We want to grow, but we're not ready to let go. Because when you let go, it is when you grow. 
So three things. The first thing is actually good news. The good news is, number one, you don't need more strength to let go. Because so many people are so tired already, they feel so depleted, they are in a relationship or at the work, or deep down there is emotions that wear them down, anxiety, fear, stress, name it, guilt, that they don't have the energy. How many times do people tell you, I am tired? We live in a challenging time. So it's good news to know you don't need more strength to let go. That's point number one. What do you need? And that brings me to point number two. You need understanding. This is what you need. Therefore, it's good to go to a counselor, to a good friend, to a wise person, because they bring you to a different understanding. They help you to look to the same situation through different lenses. And this is what the Bible does. It helps us to look through a different lens. Because when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at will change. So we need to have a better understanding. And this is exactly what Abram did experience. What was Abram's understanding? Abram's understanding was he really believed that God will provide. And that brings me to that verse right in the center of the book of Lamentations. You know, it's a book which Jerusalem is destroyed and it's a cry everywhere. People are, are crying. It's a lament. And right in the center of that lament is the word hope. And then it says in verse 23 of chapter 3, Great is your faithfulness. It's every morning new. So God is faithful, but the Bible says he's great in that. Great is his faithfulness. You can just look back in your life and then you realize God has always come through. Great is his faithfulness. So it's easy to look back and say, great is your faithfulness. But when we look forward, because we've never been there, we haven't let go. And when you let go, you are in a territory that you've never been. And then you just need to realize, I need to trust God. I need to know that God is faithful. And this is the understanding you need to have. The understanding you need to have is God doesn't want you to go through life. God wants you to grow through life. And the only way to do that is to let go. Because to let go is to grow. So have a good understanding why you need to let go. And that brings me to point number three. If I know that God is faithful, and that's my understanding, then I put my trust in Him. And that's number three. And that brings me immediately to the verses that I have said right in the beginning of the year. Those two verses are my verses for 2022. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean on your own understanding. Submit in all your ways to God and He will make your paths straight. And that means when Baba says you will make your path straight, God will provide. Just put your trust in Him. I know it's not always that easy, but get the understanding. Let go means to grow. Let go and let God. Because when you let go, you let go of certainties. You feel you're certain of your guilt. You're certain of your job. You are certain of an unstable relationship. And when we say let go, it doesn't mean I move from certainty to uncertainty. No, you move from certainty to openness, where God will do new things for you. To let go is to say goodbye to a season, to open up a new season. So put your trust in God. I also mentioned a story before in the beginning of the year. In the Second World War in London, they experienced the bombings by the Germans. And a dad took his son by the hand and they ran out of the door because of the bombings. And he jumped into a, a hole. He knew there was a big hole that he could um, be safe. So he jumped in the hole and his son was waiting. And he told his son, please jump. And then his son said, Daddy, I cannot see you. But the dad could see the silhouette of his son because of the bombings that lit up the sky in red. He could see when he looked up from the hole, 
the deep pit, he could see the silhouette of his son. Therefore, he told his son, my son, jump. Daddy can see you. Let go. Take that step of faith in the future because God can see you. God wants you not to go through life. He wants you to grow through life. So many people grow old, but not up. God wants you to grow up. God wants you to trust Him. That is the most exciting thing there is to do, is to trust God for your future, to give your life in His safe hands. He will never let you down. Let us be brave. Let us face our fear, face everything, and rise. This is the time to rise. Let's pray. God, I want to thank you for your amazing grace. Thank you, Lord, for so many examples in the Bible, people like Abram, who really was willing to let go because he knew that you will provide. Lord, we know it's not always easy to shake it off. It's not that easy. But how can we do that? We don't need more strength. We need more understanding. We need more trust. Thank you, Lord, that you open up a new future for us. We don't move from certainty to uncertainty, but we move from certainty to openness, where God will open something new, something so exciting. Help us, Lord, to take that step. Amen. So wherever you are, God has placed you. You are not an accident. God also sends you to people to live the life in fulfillment, to help people to understand that they mustn't go through life, they need to grow through life. May God help you to be an instrument of peace and to be an agent of change. God bless you.